Uh, yeah, so today I've just gave uh, some uh, introduction about a star uh, embedding. Um, so this is uh, the outline. Um, so uh, I will start with uh, why we need embedding data. And uh, then uh, I will uh, talk about how uh, we uh, submit a embedding request or how do you uh, provide all the details uh, needed for a uh, in the banning production. Uh, then I will cover uh, something about uh, how the embedding code works. Um, yeah, I'll just uh, look at how the, you know, uh, simulation and the data uh, flow in this embedding code. And then I will go through the embedding production, how embedding production works and uh, from uh, one step to another. Um, then uh, I will um, show something about the uh, embedding base QA um, because this is something uh, to, to, to ensure the quality of the data. And uh, I think uh, uh, the, also the analyzer need to uh, look at this the, uh, uh, QA plots. And um, then I will show how do you uh, analyze the embedding data. So uh, uh, in particular, the MUDST data, uh, which is uh, the current recommended uh, embedding data format for analysis. And then uh, uh, I will cover how do we find ex existing embedding data. Um, before you uh, submit a new one, you can actually look for um, the exi existing one for, for your analysis. And uh, finally, I will cover uh, something about uh, known, this is a known embedding issues, so which is still um, need to be addressed. Okay, so um, I will start with uh, why we, we need embedding data. So um, uh, as all uh, we, uh, all we know that um, the um, uh, detector acceptance and efficiency is uh, very important um, because we needed it to correct the uh, loss factor and uh, correct it for the uh, signal uh, loss due to uh, detector efficiencies and, and so on. So um, and many analysis actually need this uh, efficiencies. So, and uh, in STAR detector, uh, our main tracking device, the TPC, the TPC if you see actually heavily depends on the uh, uh, TPC occupancy. Uh, that means um, uh, if uh, event have very large ref mod, then uh, the efficiency could be much lower. And uh, also the efficiency depends on the uh, data taking conditions, uh, for example, luminosity and, uh, and uh, dead channels and that readout and also the, the uh, vertex distribution. And these uh, data taking conditions so, uh, actually uh, were rise run by run. So yeah, as you guys uh, are taking the shifts, you should know more about this. And, uh, and uh, these are actually very complicated. And um, in principle, if you want to have the uh, TPC efficiency, we can actually do the full TPC simulation with uh, some sort of uh, embedding, uh, uh, some sort of event generators like a hygiene. We, uh, we uh, simulate a full hygiene event. Uh, then uh, we can get the uh, TPC uh, efficiency. But this is actually very uh, computing intensive work. And uh, this is uh, for STAR, I think it's not uh, feasible to uh, for us. And, so um, the solution will be that uh, um, we embed uh, some of small fraction of simulated TPC tracks into the real data events. So um, uh, there's an event, real data event is uh, where the efficiency is studied or the efficiency is needed. So then uh, 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 after the reconstruction, we can uh, count the number of simulated tracks uh, that are in the data and, uh, and uh, uh, compare with the input, we can get the efficiency. 
So um, these uh, embedding have been uh, described uh, some sort of in details in the uh, TVC uh, NIMA A paper a uh, long time ago. So uh, currently we are still using this kind of uh, technique for efficiency. So, and uh, yeah, so the, uh, the good thing is uh, for, for one study, uh, we don't need too much uh, uh, computing resource, but uh, there are also caveats. Um, that is for each type of particles in study or for each analysis, and also for each data set, um, uh, even for different trigger types in the same data set. Um, uh, and uh, for this uh, efficiency study, uh, we probably also need a dedicated embedding sample and uh, uh, for this purpose. So that means uh, since the star has a lot of uh, analysis projects um, and in different data set of triggers and also different particle species, that means that we need, need actually a lot of embedding uh, data to be produced for each analysis. And uh, yeah, and okay, so um, our next page is, okay, uh, since a uh, lot of people actually, a uh, lot of analysis uh, need this embedding data. So that means um, we need to uh, fit the uh, embedding request uh, to, the, uh, to the analysis need. So uh, that means uh, uh, during submitting the embedding request, we should uh, provide all the key information uh, for each embedding request. So for example, um, here at least uh, actually all the key information uh, for, the, for the real data sample because embedding by definition is embedded the simulation tracks to the real data tracks. So that means you need first to provide the details of the real data sample and to be embedded into. So uh, for example, you need to provide the trigger set name and, uh, and also you need to provide the file tab. Uh, for example, the ST physics is uh, 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 often used and also some people use uh, other stream. So uh, then you need to provide this uh, uh, file tab. And uh, yes, um, in embedding uh, production, um, and actually we uh, uh, can only use uh, this kind of ST uh, underscore uh, like a physics and underscore ADC file uh, for the embedding production because the, only this uh, ADC DAC file contains the raw uh, TBC uh, uh, electronics uh, signals and uh, only this uh, uh, kind of a file contains this uh, information for embedding. So therefore, um, and for each embedding production, um, I mean, for, for each data set um, due to the limitation of disk space, and uh, we cannot actually get all these kind of ST ADC files from HPSS. Uh, usually we can only sample like uh, 100 kilo events or 200 or maybe uh, uh, at most 500 kilo events uh, a time. So that means we can only like uh, grab uh, 5,000, uh, 500 duck file to disk. And, uh, and that means um, if you uh, request like uh, several million events, uh, that actually means uh, this set of a DAC file will be used uh, several times uh, and uh, to be embedded uh, uh, one, one after another. So to reach the desired full statistics um, uh, because of the limitation of disk space, right? Um, okay, so this is a one limitation. So another information we needed is production tag. So for the real data production, uh, data, real data, you know, uh, we probably have many production tag for uh, one data set. So you have to specify which production ta tag is used. And uh, why this thing is important because the production tag 
uh, it really means uh, which star library is used in the data production. And this also means uh, which uh, 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 tracking software is used in the production. So, uh, and for the embedding production, we should use a, exactly the same tracking algorithms uh, in, in embedding uh, a reconstruction stage. So, um, and uh, another information is the run range. So uh, you, sh you should provide the uh, list of, uh, of good runs, also the range of the runs. So therefore we can uh, uh, grab the, a uh, sample the uh, uh, dark file uh, according to this range and uh, to have some sort of a uh, uh, uniform sampling of the uh, dark file within this range. And also you need to provide the trigger ID and also the vertex selection cards. This is also the, all the events cards is the here in your analysis, should be in your analysis. And then in principle, it should be the same in your analysis, but um, uh, we can ha have a, 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 some sort of a, a loser uh, event constraint in embedding. And uh, there are also other possible event cards. For example, some, uh, some people only care about the central events, right? Uh, in their analysis, so therefore uh, they only uh, need the, the embedding into a central clearance. So they can assign these uh, reform, reformat cards. Um, then uh, we can, uh, by, by embedding into this event, we can actually save uh, uh, some computing time. Uh, I mean, we can cut out those other, other events by uh, embed only into central events. Okay, so these are the key information needed to uh, for the for describe the raw data sample. So then to form a uh, full uh, embedding request, we also need uh, need you to provide the uh, details for simulation and uh, maybe re reconstruction. So um, we need to know which particle type you want to embed into the real data. A real event and also the decay mode. Uh, this is uh, specific for unstable particles and for example the drip site to dynamic. And uh, we also need to know the PT range or the input particle and the distributions and for example uh, uh, 0 to 20 GV or C flat distribution or some sort of exponentially weighted distribution so all the kinds of uh, uh, weighting can be done in, in embedding. And um, beside the PT range, we also need the pseudo repetitive range or repetitive range. So this uh, usually flat um, uh, distribution. And uh, but but you need to uh, let us know exactly uh, whether you need to flat in pseudo repetitive or flat in repetitive. So because these two two quantities are different. And then we also need to know how many monocular particles to be embedded per event. So usually uh, for GoGo clearance, we embed like 5% of ref mod um, or uh, uh, at most 10% of ref mod uh, monocular particles per event. So, um, and also you can assign a fixed number. So like a five per particle per event, this is also fine for PT clearance, for example. And um, there are also some special uh, embedding uh, in a sub, uh, code QCD group and, uh, on, and uh, 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 jet call group. And they uh, sometimes request the uh, even generator embedding to zero bias events. So therefore then you need to let us know which uh, simulator you need, and also um, uh, generator version, and also uh, details about the setup for the for the generator, uh, uh, either Kumark or some uh, some script to uh, invoke the uh, generator should be provided, and also and these are the uh, special one for zero bias event uh, embedding. Uh, okay, so 
these are uh, oh, sometimes we also need some some other information like uh, um, production chains. So uh, uh, some people might need to have some special uh, setup options in the production chain. So uh, this should be specified in the request. And, uh, and also sometimes some people need uh, the EMC or BTOF in the simulation. So this should be also uh, specified. So all this information can be found in the uh, web page. So um, you can also uh, uh, later on, you, if you want to submit a request, you can uh, look at this page. All right, this is how we submit uh, or uh, submit the request. So um, once the request is submitted, then uh, um, the em em embedding will be set up and uh, then uh, um, and uh, uh, by, the, by the embedding team. And also the, uh, 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 the setup will be, uh, uh, after setup is done, then the embedding code will be uh, executed to produce uh, the embedding samples. And uh, this page, I show how the embedding code works. So um, I don't know, this is some, uh, this code actually do the uh, 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 embedding to, uh, of the simulation, simulated the tracks to the real data uh, events. So that means uh, first we have to uh, uh, simulate the uh, um, Monte Carlo particle, uh, uh, I mean, uh, through the T, uh, star TBC. So uh, the first step is uh, we sample the Monte Carlo samples, uh, particles uh, in the assigned kinematic range. And also we uh, put, it, put them on the real event primary vertex. And uh, from this point, um, uh, through the jump simulation, and uh, these particles will uh, uh, traverse through the star TPC, and also, and uh, uh, the giant will also simulate the energy loss of this uh, uh, Monte Carlo particles in TPC, and also generates the uh, Monte Carlo TPC heat. And uh, with this Monte Carlo information, then then the next step will be uh, the TPC resonance simulator. So uh, the T this uh, code uh, with uh, uh, simulate the uh, signal generated by the energy loss, energy deposition of the Monte Carlo inside the uh, Monte Carlo particles inside TPC, and generate the TPC electronic signals. And these uh, simulated signals then will be mixed with the uh, raw TPC electronic signals from real data, which is actually saved in the STADC deck files as I mentioned before. So then you have the mixed uh, TBC electronic signals. And uh, from the mixed signals, and uh, you will go through the um, TBC cluster, uh, clustering software, and also the heat reconstruction, then you, you will have the TBC heat after out of these uh, electronic signals. And um, and in this uh, stage in particular, we have to mention that and uh, um, on this uh, reconstructed hit, we also find its uh, uh, color truth ID, uh, which is uh, the uh, uh, corresponding to the uh, Mancalo TBC hit. And, uh, and uh, yeah, our next step uh, from this hit, and uh, yeah, uh, the tracking software will take over and uh, uh, do the track reconstruction. Or, or track track finding, and uh, during this time, and uh, the track track finding algorithm, we also try to find the uh, uh, this uh, reconstruct tracks uh, ID truth, uh, which is the Monte Carlo correspondence for this uh, reconstruct track. Okay, the final step after the tracking and and the embedding, we usually don't do uh, vertexing, so the vertex is taken from the real data event, event per, uh, parameter vertex. So uh, then uh, all the uh, reconstruction tracks uh, with the ID choose and the Monte Carlo tracks will be saved in the MUTST files for uh, 
for user analysis. So this is actually show the how uh, the embedding code works. And uh, here I want to emphasize that uh, this uh, TPC clustering uh, and also the track uh, finding software uh, and uh, actually the embedding the software in the embedding library will be the same uh, uh, in the library used for real data uh, uh, production. So um, therefore we, ha we have to guarantee that uh, the, the cl TPC classing software and uh, uh, tracking software are exactly the same as we're using in real data production. So therefore um, we can study the uh, efficiency. Hello. Excuse yeah. Me. Um, I have a question. Um, yes. So do you mean that? Uh, so, um, did you mean that the T the real TPC, uh, the real TPC travel TPC hits uh, from the real data and the Monte Carlo uh, TPC hits? Both of them have ID trues, and they are no, but, no, okay. Uh, no, uh, only the um. Only the uh, TPC, uh, I mean, only the reconstruct hit uh, with a uh, Monte Carlo correspondence uh, have the ID truth. I see. Yeah, uh, the real data hits, uh, I mean, uh, usually, uh, if uh, it doesn't uh, uh, overlap with uh, Monte Carlo uh, hit, uh, it will not have a ID truth. And yeah. another question is the the Jint simulation, uh, is it is it is Jint a simu, um, is it just for simulating the uh, star material? Like... Uh, mm, I, no, I, I think uh, it's uh, also have um, in the simulation. For example, in the TBC, it has a sort of a, a active volume, right? Uh, if your charged particle travels through this active volume, it will simulate also the energy loss, and uh, in this volume, then uh, and uh, then the uh, uh, the TPC response simulator will take this uh, energy loss in the volume and to generate the uh, uh, electronic signals accordingly. So um, it's not only just uh, materials, but also um, some detector specific uh, simulation. Okay, thank you. So yeah. actually I have a question following the, the previous one uh, or the one before that actually. So when you say that ID truth is not set for the tracks in the data, I, I think that's last time I checked, it was not quite true for recent libraries where it mm -hmm. would assign the ID, some ID above 10,000, I think. Do, do you yeah, know? Um, this, uh, ID, if ID truth larger than uh, several thousand, oh, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, yeah, it could mean something else. I'm not sure. But okay. yeah. No mm. problem. Yeah, if ID choose a larger than a, a, a huge number, larger than the number of many color tracks, I think it will be meaningless. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, okay. So I will move on. So, so next page, I show the um, uh, how they embedding production actually works. Um, in the previous page, I just showed how the code works. And then here, I, I just show you how the full uh, and full uh, how to say, process for uh, uh, for a embedding uh, request to be processed. And the first step is uh, we need to sample the uh, deck file. So uh, for example, if we start for uh, for a new data set that we have never uh, prepared the embedding request before. And uh, uh, for the first step is we need to sample the DAC files. Um, and uh, this is uh, sampled according to the key information listed in the, in the page number three. So um, 
and we sample this doc file according to uh, user's request. And okay, after sampling this uh, uh, doc file, and uh, we also need to grab the uh, corresponding mutist.root file and text.root file. And uh, these are actually from the real data production. So uh, corresponding to the uh, production tag specified in the simulation uh, uh, embedding request. And uh, therefore, uh, embedding production can only be done after the data production is, is finished, right? Therefore, uh, uh, because we need this uh, mutist.root and text.root file, this file actually contains the uh, like a vertex information of the real event and also the uh, uh, ref mod and some other reconstructed uh, variables, which is needed for embedding. And uh, okay, uh, all this file will be restaged from HPSS to NFS disk. So you already restore this, this data inside uh, this star embed uh, uh, disk. And uh, if you are interested, you can look at into uh, what we have now. And then we set up, set up the embedding code uh, according to the uh, detailed request uh, in the simulation request page. And uh, then after the code is set up, we, uh, we launch a test production. So at the user RCF or uh, uh, another farm at uh, NUSK, which is called a Cori. So this is another farm, uh, it's a supercomputer. And uh, so this uh, resulting test sample will be made available to RCF and NFS disk. Uh, so you're also st uh, starting in starting bed. So uh, then uh, the uh, users or the PAs will be notified about the availability of this data set. And uh, uh, usually at the same time, uh, the base QA will be produced for the test sample and um, uh, for supporting the potential uh, setup problem or, or uh, uh, code problem. And this is also be, will be sent to the embedding list or the PWG list for, uh, for people to look at. So if uh, the base QA and also uh, or the, or the PA uh, or the working group thinks this test samples looks uh, good, acceptable uh, in quality, then uh, full production will be launched, um, mostly at uh, Cori. So um, because RCF uh, computer resources is usually used for data production, um, not embedding production. So the um, uh, then after the full sample uh, produced, then uh, uh, it will be transferred back to RCF uh, NFS disk. So then the, and then the users will be notified about this uh, availability of full samples. And uh, usually PA uh, should working on the uh, PWG QA on this uh, uh, embedding sample. So if everything is good, then the request will be closed. Uh, otherwise, uh, if uh, something is uh, not, Abnormal, then we have to uh, go back to the test production to um, uh, uh, either debug or uh, uh, do something tuning in the set uh, setup to redo this process again. So, okay, uh, so if the full sample is uh, 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 regarded as, uh, as usable and uh, good, and then the data sample will be backed up to HPSS. So, um, uh, usually the uh, data uh, will be uh, stored on, on disk for at least uh, six months uh, for user to finish their analysis. Um, after that, the data may be cleaned up uh, without further notice because um, we are constantly have new embedding uh, data uh, transfer back to FS disk. So our disk is always limited. So we have to clean up. Uh, quite often, so uh, so if the users and maybe uh, later find the data is missing, uh, but they still want to use it, they can ask uh, for the data to be restaged to disk. So this uh, request can be sent to embedding list or directly to uh, embedding core editor. So um, then uh, 
then uh, the data will be restaged for not very long time, like a couple of months for, uh, for, for user to finish analysis. So this actually shows how the uh, embedding production uh, is done. Um, okay, so, um, so since uh, this is actually a, a very complicated process, so uh, uh, basically we actually, uh, all uh, working group QA on the test samples will be very important because um, uh, if not, uh, we have to produce, reproduce this sample again and again, so this is uh, with waste a lot of uh, computing resources and uh, um, people's time. So, um, therefore, um, uh, users say is uh, encouraged to check the base QA, and also uh, encouraged to look at the test samples as much as you can. So, uh, and um, you need to uh, for the base QA. Uh, this is actually provided by the embedding group, and. Um, along with the test sample. So uh, one can already see a lot of information from uh, these uh, QE plots. For example, the Moncalo input particle kinematic ranges, uh, eta YPT ranges, and you can check this uh, plots. And, uh, and also the vertex ranges, uh, triggers, and the number of input Moncalo particles. And also the uh, comparison of Moncalo real track quantities, like uh, this is a comparison of the Phi distribution uh, between uh, um, Mancalo, which is red, and then and to the real data, which is uh, blue. So you can see a good match here. And also, uh, you, you can also look at the comparison of the DDX and also the DCA between data and embedding. So, um, and uh, usually, uh, one should uh, uh, expect a good agreement between this. Uh, uh, distributions, but but um, um, if um, something abnormal happens, then uh, um, uh, it should be, uh, the uh, uh, setup should be uh, redo again to correct this, and uh, and uh, uh, basically will be reduced again. Uh, and uh, in this base QA plot, normally everything uh, should be okay. Uh, then. Uh, uh, but uh, sometimes uh, 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 users are confused by some uh, normal issue, like uh, the, the, the comparison between the um, Moncalo prime track DCA be, uh, and between data, uh, Moncalo and the real data. So uh, sometimes uh, there are little mismatch. So for example, here you can see the Moncalo, which is the red, uh, red symbols is narrower than the real data. So, and sometimes this is, this is acceptable because this is probably due to the second, secondary track contribution in real data. So which is make uh, the uh, DC broadening uh, broader in, in Monte Carlo. Um, now another normal issue is the Monte Carlo track DDX is usually, uh, not quality, quantitatively consistent with the real data, uh, but, uh, um, but it should be close. So uh, for example, here it shows uh, the red one is the um, Montecalo DDX and the blue one is the data. So um, uh, it's uh, hard to make them completely uh, consistent, but uh, it should be not, uh, it shouldn't be too far. Uh, so, um, okay, so uh, for one example and uh, of the base QA plot, you can, you can look at this uh, link for the full uh, base QA. Okay, so oh, this is a base QA. Then uh, at the same time, I think the users are also uh, strongly suggest or, or uh, to look at this uh, embedding data by themselves, just to um, uh, grab the mudsd.root file from the embedding, then uh, try to use their own code to analyze it and uh, to making some plot that you, uh, you are interested. 
and uh, to try to see whether it's an, uh, uh, reasonable or not. Right? So, um, so uh, previously people are using some other data format for embedding analysis like event.root and also minimc.root. But I think uh, nowadays people should be suggested to uh, look at MutiSD. So uh, because MutiSD.root actually uh, from embedding contains all the information needed for efficiency calculations. Uh, you can find the ST MuMC track branch uh, in, in uh, MutiSD, uh, which can turn all the Monte Carlo track information. And uh, you can also say uh, ST MuMC in vertex branch, uh, which can turn all the Monte Carlo vertices information. And also for each primary track or global track, you can also find uh, 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 ID choose uh, function. This function will return the uh, best matched Monte Carlo track ID of this uh, reconstructed uh, new track. Uh, can I have a question? Sorry. Yes. Sorry for interrupting. Uh, yeah, so no now you, you heard about this that uh, we are switching to MUDSC routes now for the embedding data. But we still have, like, for example, when I didn't put a like, precise request, but I found something very similar to what I'm looking for, like, on the list. And it's not in MUDST route. So should I use it or you would not recommend to do this? Because it's um, like older um, files. Yeah, which information you are uh, you're, you're using or? Well, generally like I'm doing flow analysis and I would like to correct this, like uh, for example, use the PT spectra or something like this. Uh -huh. So the, oh, you, you, you just need the single track efficiency, right? Yes. Oh, then, th then that's one can be, I mean, I think all the information can be found in the sending ST route. Okay. Yeah. Um, Okay, uh, I, I will show you uh, an example code uh, in the next page. Okay. Um, but yeah, but uh, here I just want to ex continue to explain another uh, function in MuTrack, which is a QA choose. Um, this is actually uh, a quantity to show how uh, uh, how good the Monte Carlo track match. I mean, uh, I mean, here you have a best match in Monte Carlo track, right? And this quantity QA choose with uh, tell you the monocular track match quality. So this means um, the exactly meaning of this uh, quantity is the percentage of the the best match the monocular track hits uh, in all monocular matched hits of this reconstructed track. As you know that uh, in a re reconstructed the uh, track, so there are some hits can be matched to Monte Carlo hits, right? Um, and uh, this quantity just show you how, uh, how, how are the percentage or the best match the Monte Carlo track uh, uh, hits inside of this Monte Carlo hit, hits, right? So usually it's a number between zero to 100. Uh, and uh, usually people need uh, to cut on this uh, value to larger than 50%, uh, like larger than 50 to have a reasonable uh, data and color match. Okay, so um, these are actually all the information we need from MUDST to have our efficiency calculation. And um, yeah, so uh, very recently, I think uh, there's um, in Pico DST, um, Gregory had already, uh, uh, include the Mancalo information in the, in the Pico DSD. Um, but I'm not, I haven't been checking this yet. Um, not sure whether uh, it's readable yet, but um, I think for the Pico DST, um, um, people can uh, produce uh, the Pico DST from mu DST uh, by the users themselves for further analysis if they need it, right? So, uh, so MuDST will be the data format for embedding data um, because of the uh, persist persistency of the data. Okay, so the next page I will show uh, uh, how 
we actually analyze a uh, also analyze the embedding media ST. So uh, here I have a uh, very simple skeleton analysis code. So you can check it out from uh, the CBS. And this is actually a directory it contains some some uh, code. And there's also a readme tell you how to run it, right? And um, it's just a, a, a Marco. And, uh, uh, and in this Marco, you can um, and uh, read in the MediaST file and do the event loop and uh, fill in the Monte Carlo track uh, information. Also, also fill in the um, match the reconstructed track information. And uh, then you do a simple uh, division to get the efficiency. This is the plot uh, I got from this code and uh, show the uh, key shot, uh, key, key plus uh, efficiency in as a function of PT. Uh, this is for uh, go, go turn seven GV in run 18. Um, I didn't actually tune the uh, track card yet, but you can see uh, some sort of a reasonable trend um, in this efficiency plot. Um, so uh, I, I think if you are interested in using the uh, migrating your code uh, to uh, MUDIS, you can look at this uh, uh, analysis code. Um, okay, this is a, a example is a very simple and, um, and for a more comprehensive example, you can also look at the uh, URIS code uh, here and you, you can check it out and look at how, um, how uh, all the information can be obtained here. And I should put, uh, finally, I should put a caution mark here for analyzing the embedding data to get the efficiency. And the first one is uh, uh, people shouldn't uh, cut on the DDX related information uh, like the N sigma uh, on the reconstructed Mancala tracks in embedding analysis. So I, I, uh, I, I think you, most people have the N sigma cut uh, in your uh, real data analysis, um, but in embedding uh, analysis, you, you, you will never uh, apply this cut. The reason is uh, embed, a DDX in, uh, in embedding cannot reproduce the data. So that is, that's, uh, also means uh, the N sigma cannot be reproduced uh, e either, right? So uh, do not cut on this. And uh, you should um, use the uh, N sigma uh, statistical way to uh, account for the efficiency for the N sigma cut. And okay, another thing is uh, the ref mass in the embedding data is, uh, I mean, it's uh, kind of a contaminated by the Mancalo tracks. So this is something uh, one should uh, notice because I think some pe people are doing the uh, centrality selection be based on rough mod. So um, if you are, if you want, also want to do it for embedding data, you should be careful. So because the ref ref mod in embedding data is not is the same as the uh, the value in the real data event. So it's usually larger in embedding. And Okay, so the last one is um, the number of input monocolor particles um, are usually set, uh, previously set to be 5% of a ref mod, uh, which is proportional to ref mod, and uh, with a minimum value of one. But uh, nowadays we uh, put the minimum values to be five. So um, this is just to try to uh, increase the statistics for previous clearance. So, um, and but but this could also uh, bias the minimal bias even uh, sample. So that means uh, in the embedding uh, samples, the uh, uh, preferred events will have a larger weight uh, if you uh, uh, treat the whole samples as a minimal bias uh, sample. So um, so you should they should be uh, careful about this. Uh, analysis. Uh, that means um, um, centrality binning is always recommended if you want to analyze this efficiency, right? So, um, so that's uh, one 
uh, suggestion uh, to you guys. Okay, then uh, another thing is uh, how to find the uh, embedding data. So, um, so recently uh, um, we had some embedding request, um, um, and, uh, and I think uh, um, people who are uh, trying to uh, submit a, a new request uh, should first look at this uh, simulation request uh, page and to try to find whether the similar similar uh, embedding request have been have been done before, right? So if uh, there are data exist exists somewhere, then you can directly using this data instead of uh, waiting for the uh, uh, new embedding data to be produced, right? So um, some um, the way to find it is to look just simply look at the simulation request page. And uh, you can use the you can use a search box on top of the page and find the, the uh, um, uh, uh, similar request as your request and uh, look at the request history to uh, locate where the uh, embedding data uh, was located. And also then uh, you can uh, try to look at this uh, star embed and star data aging disk to look for this data sample. If they are there, then you can uh, start to use it. Otherwise, you can ask uh, the embedding uh, coordinator to restage the sample. And if also you have some question, you can also directly write to the list or other the embedding coordinator. And uh, yeah, because uh, only the EC have the access to the HBSS. Okay, so finally, I think uh, the last topic will be oh, uh, the known embedding issues. So um, as we know that embeddings always, uh, um, I mean, it's a kind of a, uh, uh, related to uh, detector simulation. There are uh, always possible uh, that some uh, issues um, not resolved yet. For example, this number of hits mismatch between data and Monte Carlo at uh, mediability. Um, this is have been uh, spotted two years, maybe two years ago uh, for rank 16 to rank 18 data. In the mediability, we can see some difference in number of hits distribution between data and, and the Monte Carlo. And uh, recently in rank 18 fixed started data set, uh, we can see this, um, difference is more significant. Um, for this one, for this issue, uh, there's a ticket and uh, uh, we have studied this for a long time and uh, but still there's no solution on that. So that means uh, although we have already started the production of RAN18 data and uh, so you should keep in mind there could be some problem in the embedding data. Uh, who, which can affect your analysis. Right? And on uh, the second one, a known issue is the helium-3, helium-4 efficiency dip at BT around the one to two GV or C. Uh, this is a even older issue. So it's first started in BS1 data set. So almost uh, a decade old issue, but uh, still, um, in recent uh, data set like RAN18, um, people see some improvement, um, but we still don't really understand how, how the change in code uh, affect this uh, 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 efficiency change. So for more details, you can look into the, uh, the, uh, the, these files. There are a couple more slides in these uh, issues. So to summarize, uh, I think of uh, um, embedding data, I think it's essential for calculating the efficiencies. And, uh, and uh, then if you need to, uh, to have the efficiency in some data set, you can, especially for the older data set, you can try to find the existing embedding data for your analysis. Uh, if uh, you cannot find it, you can submit a new request to uh, fit your requirements. And also uh, currently new DSD data 
uh, from embedding is recommended for analysis. You can um, try out uh, the uh, example code in CVS and to migrate your, uh, this probably can help to migrate your um, code based on MinMC or even Doyut, uh, especially the event Doyut. And this one is really uh, can consume a lot of uh, disk space. So um, this is a reason that we'll, why we want to migrate it to MuDST data. And the, finally, the embedding setup is, uh, and the production process is complicated. So, and uh, if uh, there is a test sample, and uh, please uh, look at this uh, base QA and also um, provide the, the PWG QA timely if uh, necessary. Uh, this, will, this will be very helpful to uh, speed up the production and the converge in the and the uh, final um, full production of this request. Okay, I think that's all for today. Thanks. So thank you, Shangli. Do we have any questions? Uh, so we have a question in the chat. Uh, Krishan uh, asks, uh, do you mean that we cannot use the same uh, ref mount cut for centrality in embedding as we use in data? Uh, yeah, um, in my opinion, I, um, for the ref mount, um, you, you probably cannot use the ref mount from embedding data directly. So what I uh, have used is I um, use the ref mat from raw data because for each embedding event, there will be a corresponding raw data event, right? In real data production. So you can get the ref mat there or you can, uh, you can also um, just to get the ref mat of centrality bin, binning from there. Then you can then um, save it into a root file and you then you can um, and the in, in embedding analysis you can you can read in this uh, centrality bin from this file so that's uh, what i i have done in my own analysis okay so uh, thank you for your question christian what other questions we have um i have another one so generally, like uh, you highly recommend, uh, look, firstly, look at, before we will ask uh, requests, uh, so submit the request. We should look for the, the data, the embedded uh, data, which is already there. And for example, like when you look at the list and you find something similar to your target, let's say, but it's not necessarily like precisely the same thing. I don't know, like for example, like uh, eta cut, uh, eta cut for the, the whole data set is it's a bit different or something like this. And like, if it's like one thing, one parameter difference and not very big, would you recommend us to, to ask for another embedding? I know that it depends on which parameter, but how big is the acceptance of the, you know, the 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 differences in parameters, for example, in like eta or something like this. Uh, yes, that's uh, I, I think that that's uh, could be one reason for a new request. So if, for example, the old uh, eta range is too narrow, right? Um, then uh, if you want a, a wide, much wider uh, eta range, then yes, uh, then you should submit a new request. Okay. Okay. Thank yeah. you. So any more questions? Um, can I ask one question? Uh, this is Ashish. So yeah. Shangli, you, you mentioned something about this uh, DDX cut that one yeah. should not put it. Yeah. So the reason, uh, could you repeat again? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, um, so, um, one cannot uh, apply the DDX cut uh, in, in embedding data. Uh, the reason is uh, embedding the simulated DDX uh, is not exactly this, I cannot rep reproduce the, the data, right? Because the, I mean, the simulated DDX is, very, is different from data. 
but if you want to calculate, for example, the n sigma, um, you have to do this kind of a, a ratio of uh, DDX, uh, uh, mirrored DDX uh, to the B shell function, right? So um, because the DDX value cannot be reproduced in data, then your n sigma will be shifted, not exactly peaked around zero. So the solution was what you mentioned about the statistical approach that you know within n sigma, the, the area covered is 95% and then you change accordingly the efficiency. Is, is that? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Thank you.